Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be changing the spark plugs. My brother-in-law's 2013 Subaru Legacy. This is a four-cylinder, 2.5 liter motor. So there are four spark plugs on this vehicle and we're going to walk you through how to replace them. And we're going to just identify some of the locations that we're going to be working in right now. The way this motor is situated it is a boxer motor that is horizontally opposed. Uh, so it's not a V and it's not straight up and down. The cylinders actually shoot side to side parallel with the ground. The spark plug locations are on the sides of the motor here and then also on this side here. So it's kind of difficult to get to them, but I'm gonna show you a trick to get a little better access. One of the first things we need to do is make some room on the left side of the motor. We're gonna remove the air box using a little eight millimeter to loosen this clamp and then remove this section. That'll give us access to here. So there's just two little clamps on the front of this that come off easily. Then there's this eight millimeter that loosens up just like that. There's also a hose right here that's just clamped into the side of the air box that you just need to slip out of the, the location where it's held in place. It's really easy. And then we can back this air box cover off and remove it from the tube. And also we need to disconnect this wire for the mass airflow sensor and pull it off of the grommet that's holding it against the box. So that gives us better access to the two spark plugs here on the side of the motor. You can see them there. Those are the two coil packs that are held in place with 10 millimeter bolts. There's one on the right there and one on the left. So in order to get access to these, we need to lift the motor up just slightly so that we can get our socket wrench in to clear the frame right here where my fingers are. On the back side of the motor, there are the motor mounts that we are going to loosen just slightly. So here's one right here. It is a 14 millimeter. Mm -hmm. On the other side, right there, is the other side motor mount that's also 14 millimeters. We're gonna loosen those, remove the nut from the top, and then we're gonna jack the motor up just slightly to give us a little more extra clearance. So then here is the driver's side location of the two spark plugs. There's one there, and then there's one there. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is loosen those motor mounts. So here's the first motor mount that I'm gonna loosen. You might need a couple of extensions. I've got two mm, six inch extensions with a long socket on it to get all the way down there. And here's the passenger side motor mount. We're just gonna loosen it up and remove that nut. So now we're gonna jack the motor up uh, just slightly to give us a little more access to get to the spark plugs. So I'm underneath the vehicle here. I've got my jack set up on the oil pan with a block. This is just the wind deflector I'm pushing up out of the way. I've got my jack set up with a block on the oil pan. And I'm just gonna jack it up slightly while my brother-in-law is watching the studs on the motor mounts. Now, you don't wanna jack it up too much because you don't wanna lift the motor off the studs. You just wanna give yourself about an inch of extra clearance. We just jacked up the motor a little bit and you can see that's about how much we have on the passenger side of the stud. And this one's a little harder to see, but there's probably a quarter inch of the stud right there coming through the motor mount after we lifted up the motor. So just some advice, when you start jacking up the motor, the suspension is gonna raise a little bit as you lift the motor. So you really need to just watch the studs while you're cranking and make sure you're not actually lifting the vehicle off the ground. Now that we've done that, we can try now to get access to the coil packs on the sides of the motors. We've got the two spark plug caps there that are held on with a 10 millimeter bolt. So you need to remove those bolts and then you can pull the coil pack out from the top of the spark plug. Then you can get access to the spark plug itself. Make sure you don't lose your 10 millimeter bolt either when you back it out. There's our other 10 millimeter. So now that we have the bolts removed on those coil packs, we can remove them from the valve cover and they should be loose. You just have to work it out. It should pop right up and you hear that nice sound. So here's what the coil packs look like. I just removed the connector from it just so you could see it. Now that we have the coil packs removed, we can remove the spark plugs. And I just have my 14 millimeter on a long, like a three inch extension. And it's 
down the hole for the spark plug and seated on the shoulders of the spark plug. And I'm just going to use my socket wrench here to attach and loosen it up. And at a certain point you can lose the socket wrench and just rotate it out the rest of the way by hand. And pull it out. So here are the two spark plugs that we removed from the driver's side bank. They look pretty normal for, you know, driving on uh, close to 60,000 miles. Here's a new one just for comparison. You can see I'll post the part number to these in the description box below. The gap on these is set by the factory. It is 0 0.044. Um, and I just double checked with my little spark plug gapper tool just to verify. If they're not in spec when you buy them, just return them and get ones that are in spec. Let's go ahead and get these new ones installed on the driver's side bank. So now we're going to install the new plugs into their correct locations. Um, I apologize ahead of time, trying to film this while doing this side is kind of tight, but you just want to be careful and insert your spark plugs down and slowly thread them into place. You should not have to force it, they should thread easily. Luckily I got it on the first try. Okay, I'm just going to leave that one hand tight for now and I'm going to do the back one next. Now the torque setting on these is 13 foot-pounds, which is not a whole lot. I don't even have a torque wrench that goes that low. So you just want to get them tight and then another quarter of a turn should do the trick. I'm going to give them another, just a crank. Get them tight, and then I'm going to go one more quarter of a turn. There's an eighth of a turn. There's another eighth. That equals a quarter. I'm going to call it a day on that one. I think we're good on that one now. Now you can reinstall the coil packs and they should just slip in and get onto the top of the spark plug just like that. Then take your 10 millimeter bolt and thread it on. And those don't need to be cranked down crazy, just get them nice and snug. Now we're going to connect these wires back to the coil packs. We've got our two coil packs reinstalled. Connectors are connected. 10 millimeter bolts are tightened. Now we're going to do the passenger side. So here we are on the passenger side. There's a little more room on this side to work. Uh, there's one spark plug coil and there's the other. Same deal as the driver's side. The 10 millimeter bolt needs to come out. Then you can remove the coil packs and get to the spark plug. So we got those two 10 millimeter bolts pulled out. I'm gonna pull out the coil packs now. So I apologize in advance for this next sequence. I had to mute the footage because there was just too much bad scratching noises coming from me going in and out of that area and I really couldn't get the camera in a good spot but it's basically the same process once you get the coil packs out remove the old spark plugs then you can reinstall your new spark plugs with getting them tight and then another quarter turn and then insert the coil pack back on top of the new spark plug and insert the 10 millimeter bolts to hold the coil pack in place. Then you can reconnect the coil packs and you're back in business. Just remember when you reinstall the spark plugs, you should not have to force the threads. They should install easily and don't over tighten them. And then the 10 millimeter bolts on the coil packs do not need to be cranked down a lot either. They just need to be nice and snug.
All right, so we got the spark plugs done, guys. We're gonna lower the motor mounts back down onto the vehicle and tighten them back up. All right, so I'm gonna put the nut back on. It is a 14 millimeter. I'm not sure what the torque spec on these is, but I'm just gonna give it a good crank to make sure it's nice and tight. So we're gonna reassemble the airbox, just insert your filter just like that, then bring the back side of the airbox down. Just like that, and then close these two top clamps to hold the airbox closed. Then we can reconnect the hose here, bring around our connector for the MAF sensor, plug that in. We can use our eight millimeter to tighten up this clamp here. And then this hose has a little spot where it sits in the side of the airbox, right there. Put that back in its spot. And now we're all tidied back up and we can start the vehicle up and make sure we're good to go. And so far so good, no engine lights means we got them put back together correctly. So that's how you replace the spark plugs in a 2013 Subaru Legacy. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. We'll check you next time. Later.